I'm not very, can you hear me without a microphone? Yes. Oh, great, because if you need it, I'll just keep it right there so um, you can hear me. Um, 20 minutes is quite short or it's quite long, depending on how you think about it. First, I want to thank Kyle. I want to thank Robert and TJ for having us here tonight. Um, tonight, um, after giving a little bit of an introduction, I'd like to talk about um, connecting what we're doing now to the past. I'd like to talk about ways of using our power and talk a little bit about everyday bias. And I'd also like to talk a little bit about taking action. Um, so um, Kyle explained what I do. It's pretty hard for people to figure out what I do. Um, so usually I use pictures to show that I work with all different types of people in all different types of contexts to really help their organizations work at what they do better. You know, I think this is a great time for us to have this talk. Um, we probably see in the news and social media that there's all different types of articles about women's issues, about gender issues, about making women shine. Um, you know, some people feel really excited, some feel embarrassed, some feel emasculated, some feel empowered by this. But, um, and then some people say, everything has changed in the past year, and some people say nothing has changed at all in the past 40 years. You know, a lot of us are just plain confused what's going to come next, right? But um, I think, you know, it's just important for us to always stand on this point that we're at this point in time where, where we don't, it's not necessary to know what's going to come next because what's happening now is not only not limited to the celebrities that we see on TV, but it's part, of, or um, some of us don't even have a TV or on the computer or on our iPad, um, but this is part of a struggle that's been going on a very long time. And, you know, it's, celebrities can speak out. Ordinary people can't. It's important for us to remember that, you know, each voice maybe would not be heard independently. Not all of us have the voice of who can you think of, any big star that's come out, right? So it's now that we have all of these people putting their voices together like one drop at a time. And that's why it's getting noticed, right? So, you know, we're in this interesting moment, too. And I think one thing I want to say, nobody has ever heard me say anything positive about Trump, but one positive thing we can say, I can say about Trump is that he's actually brought a lot of people together <laughs> that never expected we would work together. In my lifetime, and I'm much older than most people in here, I've never seen a president cause women to get together from all around the world in 91 countries, not only in the United States, to march together and to band together to do something. So I'm, Sachi's known me for a few years, Kyle's known me for a few years. I try to find something positive in everything because it's pretty easy when you do the work that we do to not feel positive about everything. Now, it all, again, did not start with the Women's March. Um, some of you, I, by your faces, I know you were here when I talked about the Women's March last year as what the co-coordinator of the Women's March. This was quite an exciting thing when we, we had our, the first march internationally, well, globally, was here in Japan. Um, so it's quite exciting to actually see this and it's been spurring on not just women activists, but it's been spurring on activists, and not just in the US, but to get more involved, to look back what have we achieved, to look forward to what we want to do and what we can achieve. You know, so the Women's March, the stories of Harvey and Bill Cosby, these are important things, but these are just catalysts. These are just triggers to bring people together. Because let us not forget that in at least, at least um, Western and European countries, women were fighting for the right to vote more than 100 years ago. We're fighting against slavery more than 150 years ago. Uh, F, and maybe it's easy for us to sometimes even forget that it wasn't until after World War II that women in most countries even had the right to have their own nationality. 
let's keep that in mind that let's be positive. Things are changing. Not fast enough for some of us, um, but things are changing. And everything that we're doing now, I believe, really is built on the backs of the people who were struggling for a very long time for birth control, for the right to choose who you marry, for against child marriage, for a lot of different rights. And none of this is magical or natural. This is from a lot of hard work and a lot of people in a lot of places. Um, so I see our moment is connected to all of this. Remember, it's less than 25 years ago that a junior senator from New York said something that was still at that time considered outrageous, that women's rights are human rights, and human rights are part of human rights. Um, I studied human rights in, in, in my, part of my master's program. One of the key things, even at that time, many NGOs would still say, these are cultural issues. Remember, female genital mutilation was considered to be a cultural practice. Today, the term we use is harmful cultural practice. At that time, we didn't say that these were rights. So things are changing, but it's a lot of people in a lot of places acting together around the same time. So I want to say don't get down when you read some horrible stories. Or maybe it's just because I'm in this for the long haul. I've been do working in this type of stuff for a very long time. So it's great because of these people's efforts, we have laws against domestic violence, child marriage, and laws, institutions, systems matter, um, but they're really not enough. And I want to just share, and I never tell a personal story, but recently I was asked to give a talk to a bunch of Japanese, much older women, they called me a young woman, was very exciting, um, <laughs> business leaders, and they asked me to just tell everything through stories of my life. So I've never told this story in English before, so why not? Um, in my third year at university, I got a fellowship through some wonderful professor. Hopefully, you undergrads have a wonderful professor who knows you can't afford to go to university and will find some money for you to continue going to university. I had one of those professors, but I got a fellowship to work at the Women's Center. I was not a women's studies major. My first two years, I was, a, I was an actor, excuse me, I was a drama student. Um, and I got pulled into the anti-apartheid movement, but somehow I got this fellowship at the Women's Center. This is more than 30, 35 years ago, and my job for this year was to come up with a system, a system, 20-year-old kids got to come up with a system for reporting sexual violence. Easy, right? Easy. Where am I going to start? There's no internet. Remember, there's no word sexual harassment, date rape, gender-based violence. What do you do? There's something called a telephone. And you start calling law offices, and usually they just say, we don't do that. What do you mean, uh, sexual crimes? You mean like rape? Well, so law lawyers were no help. Sorry, Sachi. Sachi's a lawyer, but uh, <laughs> lawyers were no help. I'm sure you've seen this before. <laughs> um, library. Library. Go to the library, photocopy things. Where is the information? Well, New York State. I was going to State University of New York. And California State were the first universities that set requirements to have a system for reporting. I'm going to tell you very honestly, Without too many tears in my eyes, I was not able to establish in three months a system. But what did happen was when people found there was this, this character in this women's center, which was basically a closet. There were no windows. There, were no, there, was a, there was a table and a chair in the middle of a building. People started coming, telling me their stories. So the focus of my year ended up being documenting people's stories for submission on what needed to be done. That was actually quite a big change. I don't want to say it changed my life, but at that time, <coughs> I was not aware of how prevalent violence was, period. I'm happy to say that. But um, it was, I didn't affect any change. But there were people on 63 other state university campuses doing the same thing. 
And a year later, when we put all of this together to the Board of Trustees in Albany, maybe that's what helped bring a change. But it wasn't me, I'm just one little drop. And the person in Buffalo, another drop. And the person in all, that city, another drop. But it was a lot of people doing little things. And a lot of, and a lot of people like me who refused to leave until we got answers um, that actually started to make people listen to us. Um, yeah, I had threats that we were putting the whole system, maybe some of you have heard this in Japan, you can't talk about these things. It's an embarrassment to the university. We don't want people in public to know we have those problems. I see people looking at each other. They've experienced this. Um, but see, this was at the same time that another key thing that maybe the We Too, I don't want to say maybe, Me Too, We Too is based on the Take Back the Night movement also was happening. And I wasn't necessarily active in this, but I saw this a lot. Um, for maybe men or maybe people who've never lived anywhere but Japan, the idea of taking back the night might sound crazy because you've never thought about being attacked when you walk in the street late at night. Um, but in the past 30 years, this has expanded to more than 30 countries. And there's women all around the world asking for not asking, demanding that we actually be respected as other people in society and that people be held accountable. So, you know, even in a safe country like Japan, we know that this is an issue. I mean, the demands start small. Lights, procedures, legal enforcement. So if systems are important, creating laws are important, but laws aren't enough we need to have a way to make complaints, right? There's got to be a mechanism that actually works. Um, so I already said that, you know, this Me Too that was founded 10 years ago is really based on this history because then we also need support systems for people who have these experiences. Laws, systems, mechanisms for reporting important. So, but probably most people weren't familiar with this organization until it went, until the uh, hashtag went viral. Probably, Time's Up is a much newer organization. That's the one founded by celebrities that maybe some of you have seen um, as well on social media. And both Me Too in the past year and Time's Up have been really good at using social media. Please remember, you know, it's great to share these stories, but using social media is just a tool. It doesn't actually change the system, right? So these are really important things, and this is a big change also compared to the past, um, having these organizations go viral. And just so that you know, originally, We Too was actually founded by men to say that we support women. And somehow, this got changed in a few countries like Japan. Uh, maybe some of you have seen this, Me Too becomes me Too becomes We Too and victim blaming Japan. Um, but it's not just Japan. People are taking We Too to mean not only men we support women, but also men support other men who've experienced sexual violence as well. So these hashtags, Me Too, We Too, and then also Men Too, men who suffer, um, not just models, not just actors, but in various different places. We've seen those a lot. But there's a lot of other things we can all do. And I'd like to really start thinking about, for us to talk a little bit more about us, me, I'm talking, excuse me, not us, about our power. Because we probably see in the media hashtags or then these types of scenes when people are using disruptive power. Big groups of people getting together. But these things happen once every few years or maybe sometimes once every 20 years where you have millions of people get together. These are really visual, but these are, this is not the only type of power we have. I want to highlight a few things um, before I talk about what you can do, a few other things being done, because sometimes we really have to put pressure on leaders. Leaders matter, systems matter, laws matter, but also leaders matter. And one is leaders in the corporate world, but also in the political world. So let me start with, an, uh, was just an Excel sheet, then an organization, and I'm just gonna explain it. You don't have to read it. 
but it's called grab your wallet. Consumer power. Every day when we buy something, whether it's buying a bottle of water, buying uh, clothes that we buy, we make an active decision to support some type of company. Um, grab your wallet was originally founded just to deal with Trump business interests, but they have since expanded. They, list bo they have basically companies to boycott, companies to support, which are companies that have better gender equity practices, which are companies that have bad reputations for sexual harassment, which are companies that deal in guns. So they've expanded their mandate because they've really, been, they've really started to see how issues are connected. Also, in the past two years, Bloomberg, Human Rights Campaign, and then UN Women also have these different equality indexes. Which companies have good practices is what the UN Women um, report is about because they don't want to rate them. Human Rights Campaign is mostly focused on uh, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, and questioning equity. And Bloomberg is really looking at the financial institutions, which ones are, have better practices. So by looking at some of the different companies on these different lists, we can make choices. Who do we support with our money? And the really obvious one, of course, oh, sorry, I just love this, the Women Act. Maybe some of you have seen this. Um, not, I, I know there's a lot of women here. Um, but these are Japanese corporate leaders that, you know, support women taking a major role. But I just had to include this here because they have a young woman now on a video and the newest website. Um, but, um, you know, maybe 20, maybe they'll, they, there's no 2017 or 2018 listing on the website yet. Um, but, you know, anyway, I'll move on. Let's talk about political leadership. This is something, it doesn't matter we're from Japan, we're from the US, we're from the UK. This is very important. Not just because systems matter, but because these, these people, the people who are making decisions every day, there's people making decisions every day whether we know about it or not. And this is an easy thing we can do, but um, I'm not sure if anybody's familiar with EMILY's List. It's an organization in the US and there's similar organizations in other countries that have been focusing on preparing new uh, people to run for office, particularly women. In the US, they're really focused on getting women into the primaries because primaries elections are harder for women to win than, than uh, national elections, quite frankly. Um, and these are just some of the women who are running. I'm sorry, I don't remember who won last week in the primaries or not, but we do have a record high number of women in the US this year. There's similar organizations in Japan um, trying to support getting more women in the processes. But uh, let's not be confused and think the goal is to just elect women. Because not all women act in women's best interest, right? I mean, our goal is to elect people who are really focused on equitable laws, systems, and practices, not just women. Um, because there's a lot of other things, such as um, Every Town for Gun Safety and the Giffords Law Center are two, for example, two organizations that are really focused on by women because gun violence in the US impacts women very differently from men. And there's issues that are not, quote unquote, women's issues that impact men and women differently. So it isn't just about, quote unquote, women's issues or women's health. And the reason this is important is because even though most countries have laws against domestic violence, some countries, this is from Turkey, which last year or the year before, I'm sorry, I forget what year it is, have made domestic violence is no longer illegal. So just because a law is passed, just because you put a system in place, doesn't mean it's here to stay. And, you know, there's a lot of these things that are crimes, but do we treat them as crimes or we, do we treat them as inconveniences? And, because um, I think now I'd like to talk about the key thing that is so important. We've got systems, we've got laws, we need good leadership, but the key thing that we, I think, need to change is what the way we view these issues how we react to people, because everyday bias is much more subtle. 
And it's much more difficult to change the way people think and the way people act than change a law, believe it or not. So I would ask everybody to take, not during this event, but afterwards, take some time to reflect and think for a minute personally about the words you use, about the attitudes you have, and about the actions you take. Are you treating men or women, your son or your daughter, your male, your female friends differently because of some unconscious bias? Um, this one always works when I present in Japanese. Do you use a softer voice when you speak to women? Do you, do you use easier words when you talk to women? Or, I know I'm tougher with women. I know that's my bias. I have to get over that. Um, what, is it that we can, what is it that we do personally that is really unintended bias? You know, because really, there's a lot of Harveys. There's Harveys in every industry. And the only way they're able to get away with it is because the people around them let it happen, enable it. And it's not just men. There's a lot of women involved in enabling these people. Some of these we might disagree with, but some of these. Um, but then professionally, in any professional um, circumstance or any type of professional, in any industry, you know, we can be aware of the gender dynamics if we are meant, if we're older people, are we mentoring younger people? If we are encouraging women to take risks, this is something a lot of female bosses do as well as male bosses. Don't encourage women to take the more difficult position. Do we hire equitably, treat our staff equi equitably? Um, do we need to have, I'm not a group oriented person, but I know several people who have started lean in circles in Japan. They t tend to be very effective. Sheryl Sandberg, um, lover, hater, um, lean in circles have worked really well for some people, getting women to support each other, mentor each other, to achieve better and become better leaders. And in my last three minutes over time, no matter where you're from, you're in Japan, most of you can vote no matter where you're from, please do it, get a friend. Um, vote, volunteer, um, because we're powerful when we work together, and we're really not alone. There's so many things you can do other than voting, other than voting, other than um, using your consumer power. Join other events, like uh, this one run by Charlotte, who's sitting there, resilience program. <laughs> um, you can also come and hear Sachi speak next month at another event. I'm the, uh, oh, there's also other topics. There's other events. Um, you know, and I'd like everyone, after this, think about some, I see Mary in there. She was, I usually force people when I'm the sole leader to write, commit to doing something. I'm not gonna ask you to do that tonight. There's too many of you. But I would ask that everybody, after this event, think about one action you can take today. Something else you can do, somebody you can influence. We have a lot of information about different organizations and in different events coming up because every little action is important and we're not alone and I think that it's very important that we come together because one day our little drop is going to be the one that actually makes the bucket overflow. So thank you so much.